very good afternoon, Excellencies and Honorable Ministers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. My talk today on, is on the application of geospatial technologies for sustainable uh, natural resources and environmental management in Malaysia, which we have been using for a long time already. But as technologies improve, our way forward also has changed. So it is very important for us to know all this, that uh, geospatial technology is indeed a very important tool for sustainable management. Now Malaysia, Malaysia is a diverse country. If you look at this map, on the western part is the peninsula, and on the eastern part, on Borneo Islands, there are two big states, Sarawak and Sabah. And the total land area is 330,200 square kilometers. Population, 28 million people. But the least populated state is the big state of Sarawak in Borneo Island, with 2.5 million people only living there. And yet, based on the map, it is, uh, if you look at it, it is just almost as huge as uh, the peninsula. Okay, thank you. Now, the needs for geospatial, for sustainable natural resources and envir environmental management are really, really important indeed for us. <laughs> because we want the people, the citizens of Malaysia, to live in a clean and green environment. Therefore, with your special technologies, with your special technologies, we can make expedient and quick decisions on what need to be done on, uh, in managing our natural resources. Now, what are the natural resources in Malaysia? The categories that we have, forest resource, mineral resource, and water resource. All these have economic importance. So my presentation today, in actual fact, is on the important resources that can give us economic growth and economic importance. Abundance of forest resource in Malaysia, uh, we have 20.312 million hectares altogether natural forest resource in Malaysia and uh, different sizes in different parts of Malaysia, particularly the three regions. Some of our forest resources have been constituted as permanent forest reserves. This is important because permanent forest reserves are areas which we put into protected areas and that we do not allow activities uh, to extract timber or extract mineral in there to take place. So we put that into uh, <coughs> forest reserve, prominent forest reserve. Now the ecology of, of our forest resources, first of all, right from uh, the coastal areas, we have the mangrove forest, we have the beach or littoral forest, and then Another type of forest known as the pit swamp forest, this is inland on the mangrove forest, lowland diptocarp forest on mineral soils, highland diptocarp forest on mineral soils, and montane and submontane forest. Now our forest industry is very important to the country because it contributed uh, 6.73 billion US dollars to GDP and well job opportunities to 500,000 Malaysians in 2012. But there are forest management conflicts, dear friends. First of all, over exploitation, even in licensed consensual areas. This is where now I would like to give you this opportunity to geospatial service providers to look into this matter. Over-exploitation, how do we identify it quickly? 
so that we can take actions against those who over exploit our forest resource. Illegal forest harvesting. So in 2013, there were 647 cases of illegal forest harvesting, incurring losses of USD 10.91, 10.91 million US dollars. But we managed, actually we managed to recover it on illegal forest harvesting. We collected more than our losses. We collected about 15 million dollars in 2013, up to 2013, so that we got more. Now, difficulty in ground monitoring over exploitation and illegal forest harvesting activities is the remoteness and inaccessibility. We don't construct road to nature forest areas because they are very remote areas. If we do construct road, then that would probably invite more illegal activities into those areas. Thus, geospatial technologies, again, are much needed in this particular case. Now, on mineral resource in Malaysia, we have abundant of mineral resource of many types. But what is important is uh, to know the reserves now. Our biggest reserves are actually in, uh, in coal with 970,570,000 metric tons, still available, still unexpected. They are all there. So whoever are willing to invest in the attraction, you are welcome to Malaysia to do this when you need it. Now, the mineral industry is, is also almost as important as uh, our forests forest industry, especially mining and quarrying sector, which contributed to 2.09 billion, or 1.06 percent to GDP in 2011, with 289 licensed mines, legal mines, and 7,053 workers. Indeed, an opportunity for employment, but the threats are also there. Over exploitation in licensed mining areas and illegal mining activities. Illegal mining activities are happening, but in small, only small activities. Now, water resource, it is very important to all of us in the world. It is valuable resource to all humans. Now, water resource in Malaysia. We just look at our annual rainfall, 990 billion metric ton. Surface runoff, 566 billion, sorry, not metric ton, but cubic meters. Evapotranspiration, 360 billion cubic meters. Groundwater recharge, 64 billion cubic meters. And surface artificial uh, storage, 25 billion cubic meters. These are so in dams or reservoirs. Then groundwater storage, 5,000 billion cubic meters or 5 trillion cubic meters in aquifers. Now threats to water resource, one of which is of course climate change, we all know about this. And then uh, unplanned development, uncontrolled physical activities by individuals and groups, and of course unethical actions. So our water bodies are polluted, degraded in terms of quality. This is the scenario in Malaysia now. Out of 464 rivers, 59% are clean under international standards. 34% are polluted and 7% severely polluted. So impacts of uh, forest exploitation on the environment is very important for us to consider and determine. And it is only the use of geospatial that we can make quick assessment and quick determination. Because of putative relationship between forest and rainfall. And of course, 
soil is less protected from uh, torrential rains if the area, if the forest area is denuded. That is, if the forests are already cut from such an area. And then much higher daily variation in ground temperature in denuded areas and, of course, biodiversity loss that is part of the environment. Impact of forest exploitation on hydrological system with high river sedimentation loads by 5 to 54 directly in uh, areas of the logging and elevated sediment loads. And, of course, this impairs aquatic ecosystem, including fish habitat. Now, impacts of mining on inland water bodies, discharge of uh, mine effluent into rivers, and then seepage from tailings and uh, waste rock impoundments, sedimentation of rivers, and then uh, various chemicals for processing uh, finally ground uh, pre-telling discharge also into rivers. So monitoring destruction of natural resources and environmental health is very, very important. And due to remoteness and inaccessibility, what do we do if not for, if not for uh, the use of geospatial technologies? We all know what geospatial technologies are. It is a technology that is essential component of natural resources management tools so that we can always monitor and identify what are available to us. Now, geospatial technologies is also the method used for the measurement, analysis, and visualization of features and phenomena that occur on Earth. We have been doing this, we have been using this, but what we really want is to make quick decisions. We want available data to access available data very quickly as well so that we can take actions, especially in illegal activities. And the functions of geospatial, we all know what they are. Application, of course, GPS, we all know. GPS, this has been used uh, for geodetic control for surveying, engineering, and mapping, and also for cadaster survey. I recall when I was doing research in the mid-70s, I was carrying prismatic compass and theodolite. Then there was no GPS. I can tell you how difficult life was then. But life is so easy now. With GPS, we can go to anywhere in any country. We know where our locations are. Now, application of uh, GIS. This has been used also. We, we have been using it in Malaysia for uh, forest resource and environmental management and, and assessment. So that we can determine the land area and coverage and types of uh, uh, resource, including species and so on, topography, hydrography, and uh, of course landscape. For mineral resource, land areas, soil chemistry, etc., including topography. For water resource, hydrography, aquifers, and groundwater morphology. It is important. And then remote sensing. This is very important indeed, remote sensing. I hope that the service providers would uh, provide this to us very, very quickly because of advanced and rapid development in Malaysia, we really need a lot of data for remote sensing. We don't have to go to the ground to collect data so that we can monitor flood. Flood is really a natural disaster in Malaysia that occurs everywhere in the country and at least twice a year in a certain region or certain states. Now, uh, for remote sensing application for natural resources, of course, this is for forestry, mining, water resource, and environmental monitoring or environmental management. Now, assess assessment of forest destruction 
using geospatial information. If you look at the picture, you know what is happening on the ground like this. So that we may not have to go to, to the ground very quickly in order to be, to be able to make decisions. From here, if we have the images, then we can quickly make the decision, then go to the ground to verify. Now, assessment of forest cover changes using geospatial information, also very important. And if you look at the map of the largest state in Malaysia, Sarawak, the red areas are oil palm plantations. The green areas are forests. Now, assessment of mining sites using uh, geospatial information. We just want to uh, determine productivity using geospatial data. Safety hazard issues also important. And of course, compliance to laws and regulations by the miners. Assessment of water resource using geospatial information. We need to determine the quantity and quality. This is what we need urgently in Malaysia, so that we know the quality of our rivers very quickly, rather than doing taking samples every day and do analysis. So if there are already geospatial data available for quick reference, it is indeed very important for us to determine uh, what direction we need to take to uh, ensure that our rivers are always clean. Thus, natural resources requires geospatial information. And of course, it implies knowledge for us who use it. And uh, this is represented by using and analyzing a series of geospatial information data sets. And, uh, Geospatial information that are the sum of our interpretation and synthesis of data set. Nowadays, we are so lucky that we have service providers that can do such analysis for us very quickly. So even if we don't have the time ourselves to do it, they are available, geospatial uh, service providers. Now, environmental impacts of natural resources extraction and exploitation. Uh, this is, of course, in Malaysia, we have been doing this, and uh, we know it, like land degradation, natural disasters, and biodiversity loss. This is in terrestrial ecosystem, but in, in land, water, and aquatic ecosystem, we have done this work also to determine the uh, quality of our water in rivers. So using just special information to develop integrated management plan for natural resources and environment uh, are indeed very important. And for us in Malaysia, we have been using this for uh, our production forest. That is, if we issue licenses for timber extraction, then we use a lot of GIS for protected areas and wetlands to make sure that no activities, whether they are legal or illegal, be carried in there because they are totally protect, protected. And also for wildlife reserves. We've been using all those mining sites and mineral reserves and water resources and pollution. We keep on doing it. So defining the use of geospatial technologies this is uh, utilization of geospatial technologies is based on the types of information to be delivered and also our own needs. In Malaysia, we know our needs. So again, my uh, suggestion to service providers, you have to know our needs as well so that you can supply us what we need very quickly. In conclusion, Geospatial technologies are vital for sustainable management of natural resources and the environment for the purposes of uh, expedient and accurate decision making. And also, in Malaysia, my ministry is supplying uh, geospatial information to the private sector as well, apart from the public sector. We supply geospatial information to the private sector
as well. Because the integration of uh, private sector and public sector is very important to determine sustainability on the use of our natural resources and management of the environment. Thank you very much for your kind indulgence. In Malaysia, we say terima kasih. Thank you very much.